I'm trimming my lemon balm. I'm actually pretty much butchering it because we are moving soon. And this stuff just grows back like mint, practically. Couldn't tell you if it's in the mint family. I'm pretty sure I looked it up once. I think it might be, but um, don't have that off the top of my head right now. Um, but once it's, you know, this is grown out, it's flowered. Um, and I have already done this once to the lemon balm <laughs> this year and it are, and it came back like crazy and it's already flowered. The flies really like it just like they like mint. Um, if you have mint out, watch your fingers. Thank you. If you have mint out and they start flowering, the flies seem to love mint and lemon balm a lot. Um, last year I had mint on my patio and we had to move it. Oh, is that a fly or a spider? <laughs> we had to move it to the front because we actually, we have a patio in the front, but you know, it's more like a show patio, not a, um, not one we use, but it's, we just put it by the front doors, the mint, because the flies just love it. And then we were having way too many flies by our um, back patio. So another thing that I'm out here doing right now is cleaning up my tomato plant. You can see here, this guy has been destroyed by a, um, what is it? It's a horn, I have to look it up. It's a tomato caterpillar. Um, it's like some kind of like horn. Oh, I can't think of what it's called. He has this little point at the, at his tail. Uh, he's green. Looks like he has all these eyes on the side of his body. Um, but he's definitely had a good time with my tomato plant and taken all the leaves off. So I'm going to actually cut this one down, uh, until I get down to these leaves down here. And I'm just going to see if it survives, if it doesn't survive. We won't die, but I'll tell you what, these tomatoes are my favorite. They're like black on the top and then you can tell they're ripe only from the bottom. But when they are young, they're pretty much black on black. And then um, as they ripen up, you can finally see the red. But they, I did kill one of the caterpillars, so I know I've at least got got one but he will just straight up destroy the whole tomato plant sitting there eating that tomato and then just takes all the stems down to the nubs and I looked it up last year it's some kind of moth that lays their eggs on the tomato plant and then it develops into a massive caterpillar like massive and um, like I said has a horn tail and then it looks like he has eyes on the side of his body um, so I will find a picture of it and include it in this video, but I just went through my tomato plants. Oh, sorry. That's the, that is the lemon balm, but, um, I went through my tomato plants and just removed. Oh yeah. We caught a stink bug. So that was part of our fun biology day, but, um, took off all the suffering limbs of the tomato hopefully hopefully this plant will recover um from this you know you can see here there's a lot of a lot of branches missing leaves but there's still there's still a lot of leaves this one i'm probably gonna have to cut off this whole part because almost yeah there's like no leaves on this branch so that's gonna come off um this one Thankfully, this one was kind of a gap. There's a hibiscus between them. So I don't think that it, he got over here to these ones. Well, that's not true. Looks like he did. What's surprising is I'm like, I pulled these out because this seems like a lot of damage for just one of them. Last year, I found multiples on my tomato plants. Um, and so I had my eye out for them. And what's crazy is when you're out here, I mean, you can be looking directly at the plant and not see it. Um, so here's another thing to tell you. So I usually pinch off these, um, oh, why can't I think of the word now? 
um, oh, suckers. I usually pinch off these suckers. And this one's all right. So what I did on the other one, and this is kind of a science experiment here, is I left the suckers. Because they had suckers on the same area where I was having some trouble spots. And so I took the trouble spots off and left the suckers so I can see if those are gonna come back and if this plant is going to to recover. Um, I did that in quite a few spots. So like, here's an example. You got a sucker here, and then you have this branch that's kind of been through the ringer. And so, yes, I should probably use my pruning shears, but it's working just fine by not doing that. Um, and so I've, I've left all the suckers there to see if those are gonna help bring this plant back. Um, but this one, you know, it's kind of on a case by case whether I should remove them. So this is why I was removing them. See this, just this plants under some stress. Oh, there's a spider. Um, and so trying to remove some of the um, work that this plant's gonna have to go through to just recover from all the damage. Um, trying to remove some of the stuff that's just drawing energy out of the plant. Um, but you know, this is all stuff that we're just taking with us to the new house. And if it doesn't survive, then it doesn't survive. This is just, you know, every, I approach every gardening year as a, as a year for opportunity. So, um, so we'll see, we'll live and we'll learn. And yeah, that's the tomatoes.